Hello friends. So in this lecture we will be discussing on the journal finders and we will be discussing on different types of journals. Not I am going to tell you the regarding the predated journals but you know while you are um, trying to publish a particular article or rather your um, intellectual output in the recorded form to a journal. So first and foremost thing is that you have to understand the quality of the journal, who are the persons behind that journal, the, like the editorial board, the time required for publication of that journal. So all such things are there. Along with that one, you have to understand that thing also. That is, there are the different journal finders tools because many a times you might not be very much um, have the adequate knowledge of finding the right tool to get um, which where you can publish your research. So I will tell you some of the journal finding tools also from where you can find out your relevant subject specific journal and as well as the broad spectrum of journals where multidisciplinary articles are being published. So along with that one just to carve the challenge of predatory journals you have to know that one very well that is not only uh, you have to go with that but route of finding out the real journals or rather the authoritative journals but you may have to explore something like the commercial journals as well as open access journals and whenever you will be uh, having the um, understanding of all these types of things so then it would be easier for you to um, you can say dig into the domain of academic discipline and you will be rest assured that uh, your intellectual work wouldn't, be, wouldn't actually be draining by some unscrupulous people. Uh, so get tuned, we are coming with the presentation. Thank you. Now the topic of our today's uh, discussion is the finding of the right journal at the right time for the right work. And you know that's very well. That is, um, just to get a right journal is not um, very easy task. And obviously, you know that one. That is, whenever you are uh, finding that, if you don't find the right journal at the right time for the right work, specifically, uh, like academic research demands doing the things just in time. And that's why if you can't do your work, if you can't publish your work within the right time, so there might be the other fellows who can um, take this challenge and if he is or he or she is publishing that one before you, so all of your effort regarding this um, research will go in vain. So that is what where we are actually talking about, that is the finding of the right journal at the right time for the right work. Now regarding this one, the first we are coming with the overview of the journal selection, the very concept of journal selection. And regarding this one, I must say you that thing, now see, there are three sections, so that is uh, three slides rather. So overview of journal selection, if you actually see that one, so first of all we are going to describe the role of the journals, what actually the journals are doing. So first foremost thing is that journals, you can take, you can start from anywhere, it's not a big deal. So just take this one, that is journals, this helps set intellectual standard. Yes, obviously if you can publish one article in the nature or other IEEE magazine, you know that one, it will help you to set your intellectual standard. But if you publish your article, if you publish your journal, a very local or regional journal obviously will not be actually get noticed by your peers of your discipline and obviously your standards will also be questioned. Now second thing is that the journal it helps researchers advance in their careers. Obviously you know that one. The more this intellectual standards will be exposed and obviously the researchers will, be, will get their advancements and it will help the researcher to advance in their research, convey results to the academic community, whenever you are conveying that one to the academic community, community by using the different channels of communication like that of slide share, like that of you see research gate or academy ID. So 
lot of things are there. So obviously you will see that one academic committee uh, will actually get notice or will be will actually you will be getting you will be getting notice by the academic community, and at the same time, academic community will actually be in a position to identify your work, and then there is a certify authenticity of your research. That is whenever you are doing this research. And if it is actually published in a recognized journal, so obviously it certifies the authenticity of your research. And last but not the least, that is the facilitated communication among researchers. That is, you are imbibing the other communicators, other other researchers, by communicating your finding, so that they will be, or they are getting the impetus to. Uh, move further. So that is what is a kind of you can say that one a, um, uh, mentoring of the peers or mentoring of your years and years in the academic field. So this is the first thing that is actually the role of journal. Now, if you see this is the own journal selection, the second things that so journal selection. Whenever you are actually going for that one. That is, first of all, suppose you are doing research and you are identifying some of the ideas, and then you are writing that one manuscript preparation. And here, you want to publish your article. So focus on this presentation. Here you see journal selection. This one. So obviously you see what you are actually going to do. You are submitting manuscript. Once submitting manuscript to this journal, you see this one. They are going for that on the peer review. So this peer review can be blind review, double blinded review, or rather, or rather other policies. So after peer review, this will be either accepted or rejected. Once it is accepted, it can directly be published, or rather, it can go for revision, and then it will be published. So actually, this is the sequence of. Uh, uh, the process of accepting one article in a journal, very reputed journal. So this is coming from this one. So obviously these things, research, your manuscript prepared, then submitted. So it is going to the journal. They are having a review policies, and this might be different kinds of review policies are there. That is the blind review, double blinded review, peer reviewed, and then rejected or accepted. If it is accepted, then Uh, the editors might actually say you some bit of revisional aspect, or they can ask you some bit of revision. So once it is revised and then re-accepted, then obviously it will be published. Otherwise, it will be rejected. So this is what the second concept that is, and third one, you know. There, uh, actually, we are seeing that one a mushrooming of journal production. Everyone is producing journals specifically each and every time. If you open your Gmail, you will see that one the invitations of uh, submitting articles, and each and every one is claiming that their impact factor is more than two, three, four, five. And many of the journals are rather being published from India. Some of the other journals are published from other places, and they have a huge, actually long editorial board, and where you know, many of the people are rather from the interdisciplinary disciplines. Uh, but these journals, so lot of journals. So actually, you you there is always a chance that. You might get lost within these uh, pile of journals. So you do not know what are the different types of journals are, are rather really useful, or rather these are known as the core journals, core which are rather the very few journals which are rather considered as or having the elitist property. That is where if you if you publish if you can publish any one article. In any of these journals, and you will get noticed by the academic community, not only in your country but throughout the world. So obviously, you have to have that one. That is, until and unless you can identify the real journal, you will be in trouble. So mushrooming of journal. Right now, UGC is taking care of this one, and UGC is actually taking some kind of stringent measures for carving it down. 
and they already um, did that one previously they discarded 4335 uh, journals from their list which were actually included in 2016 CGC list and then they form UGC care and in UGC care also they are rather including some of the so but there are debates regarding that one and there are rather discords also that is when people are actually talking about the very way of including that one but uh, a kind of uh, initiative has already taken to curb in town that is the kind of the business uh, of journal or uh, actually the business of snatching money in the form of uh, your output gray output of your gray matter or rather output of your identity as an academician so now we are actually going to this perspective that is the considerations while selecting a journal now while you are considering or rather trying to select a journal this is rather finding out the needle on the in a haystack you see it's a very tedious thing so only thing is that if you really try to find this one out you have you can't actually find it that one with your naked eye so you have to take the help of some of the devices here you see the magnet is there so it can so obviously whenever our target journal is like that and we are having this one the actual crowd of journals or rather you can say that on the pile of journals and obviously your journal is somewhere hidden within this one which can actually better reflect your academic perspective so you have to find it out so obviously you have to dig it out from this pile and that is where the certain factors need to be considered for identifying, identifying the most appropriate journal so how you can do that one so you are trying to get that one by this thing that is is the channel in or general and second one is that significance who does your work help then novelty and innovation what is the outcome of your work so practically speaking you have to assess yourself first this assessment is very important that is what is the is the journal niche or general and the significance who does your work help that is which journal can help you for that one and novelty and innovation what is the outcome of your work and then you are questioning some of the things like that does the journal that is accept your article type that is original review case reports later communication so what are the type of article you have written that is the is if it is some kind of original ideas or rather it is some kind of thing like you say uh, a conceptual paper or rather it is a review or rather a case report or the later later or communication and does the journal accept theoretical or applied research so um, that is why the theoretical underpinning on a particular subject is always uh, some bit of um, it's a cloggy or a fuzz, fuzzy in nature so um, does this journal accept such kind of um, interpretation or like that and then you were having that one that is accept clinical or laboratory research so is it that the journal is accepting that one then publish open access subscription this, this thing is very important that is where you the journal the, the journal is subscription based where you are actually publishing that one what is their policy that um, this particular work can be accessed through the open channels is there any such kind of thing and lastly there is a charge publication fees uh, there are big journals or there are actually the um, many journals are there they are rather charging publication fees and some of the journals are there which are not publication fees so these are important because whether you are having that type of surplus for paying the publication fees for your article or not so and at the same time so you have to read the titles that is about the journals and scopes and check it as whether the scope of the journal is rather matching with the scope of your research area that is very important 
Now see accessibility. Here this thing is very important, accessibility. This is how, so even if you have written one journal in an article, but most, most important thing is that whether that journal is accessible or whether your article is accessible uh, by the users or by the persons, by the academic field. So obviously, obviously accessibility is an issue. If the, your journal is not that much of accepted or familiar so you'll be in trouble so you have the broad scope journals that is the top tier journals like cell nature science these are the top tier journals more competition lower acceptance rate that is competition is there lower acceptance rate so they have high standard or rather they have a very very stringent peer review policy the in case of language in case of your uh, findings in case of your articulation of your ideas so obviously you see that one the very top tier channels then you have the mega journal the plus one high acceptance rate but charge publication fees so here uh, for, for, for authors like um, the Indian authors so the authors from the countries like the third world countries or the developing countries we do not have that much of surplus or rather even if we have, we have surpluses so now the policy of the exchange policy that is the currency exchange policy all these things are rather coming as a bar for that one that is going for this thing there is mega journals then we have the specialized journals like traditional and society link journals like American Chemical Society then you see for different types of physics uh, Royal Chemistry of uh, Royal Society of chemistry then Oxford University Press uh, so these are the society or rather you can say the institution related or publication related journals they are also specialized journals so different levels of specialization are there and narrow focus ensures exposure to a targeted group of researchers so this is what and second is that we have the regional journals we have the international journals Region journals are good for domestically significant research, so that is the um, case studies of uh, a particular area or the region, but this may not be recognized internationally because the interpretation you are making, where interpretation is you are making on the basis of your data that you got from the, the regional um, basis and that may not get fitted with the other places, the international places, because this thing you cannot replicate, man, mimic, or you cannot regenerate in other places and may not meet the indexing standards of the major databases because citations are there, that is the more citations, more usage, more um, you can say that is the value or rather the codified value or more intrinsic value is there so obviously that will be indexed in the indexing journals but if it is not there in the region and journals you know uh, these journals and even if you see that one the regional journals these are also getting laser marks in your UGC API academic score so obviously regional journals are rather considered as if I uh, say that one um, it's not inferior in that sense but actually this recognition level is rather very less and you have the international journal there's widest exposure and global recognition it is having the generally higher publishing and ethical standards but may not be accessible to researchers because of the lack of funds and most of the cases these international journals these are right now uh, right now bundle or rather these are right now being maintained by some kind of um, vendors, global vendors, the aggl aggregators, the agglomerators like you see this web of science like of say the Thomson Reuters or rather the group of Elseviers and then you can say Emerald Publishing. So they are having everything or rather some of the repositories like JSTO scopus so this is how they are actually blocking the access so this is one thing and accessibility whenever we are going for the second type of accessibility and international we already discussed and there's the third one there is another model that is known as open access model in the traditional model we have the published materials that can be accessed only by the readers who subscribe to the journals that is if the, you 
subscription. If you have a subscription of the journal, you will get the issues in your home delivered or rather in the, your department or you can get that one in the library. And there are gold open access models. So there are, these are actually the two types of models. One is grown, gold open access as a green one. And research materials are freely available. You are submitting that one in the open repository or the, the, the open access journal. And the policy is like that. The first time it is being published in the um, open access journal and obviously there is no string attached. Everyone from everywhere can access your article. And the green open access model, this is some kind of uh, different thing. That is you are submitting that one to one commercial journal but the policy is like that after publication or after submitting that one that particular journal to that article you can submit a preprint of your article to any open access journal or open access repository and provided that that publisher is rather giving you the green signal that is you can submit that one. Many of the um, uh, actually commercial journals or commercial journal uh, vendors or publishers, they are having some bit of embargo period of six months to 12 months to two years. So this is after after two years or after one year, after 12 months, then you can submit that one to the gold open access model, not gold rather, you can submit that one to the open access channel. So this means, so there is the green is also fine, but green is rather taking some bit of time, but gold is direct, but many people are still having that notion that one that is uh, open access model is something where and the inferior journals are there and people are not actually using open access more journals very much. So people are always using this one closed access journals. So this is not true. And there are some hybrid models also. That is some portions are openly accessible while some of the portions require subscription. So these are options. Now discoverability. This is also very now we are coming to our point. So Discoverability means that is how we'll understand that one, my journal is rather, or the journal I'm supposing where uh, that my article, I will publish my article, that is a good journal. So is the journal indexed in major abstracting and indexing services? This abstracting and indexing services are, these are rather, actually these are, you can say that one, these are not like the journal itself. This is a kind of indicator or rather it's kind of thing that is they are enlisting the journals as well as the articles, the abstracts in such a way if the journal is having high values and these indexing journals or indexing, yes, these indexing services, they include those journals there according to their ranking, their citations, their usage by the individuals and obviously these are being measured with different types of techniques like impact factor, then wave of science, S Scopus, Sky Finder, IEEE Explore, PubMed, Embase, SiteShareX. So these are the different types of, you see them of abstracting and indexing services they are recording the journals according to their standard. And if you really want to identify whether a journal is rather very good or or rather whether the journal is having the significance in your academic field, so you can go to these databases. Some of the databases are not actually accessible, freely accessible, but some of the databases are obviously freely accessible. You can go there and you can search whether your journal is there or not. At the same time, you can even find out that is their impact factor. You can find. So impact factor means so the policies are like that. Only those journals are rather enlisted in these indexing and abstracting services, which are rather qualifying the parameters established or parameters set up by this indexing and abstracting service agencies. So then we have that one that is we can go for discoverability by identifying whether the journals are having the social media presence or rather these are rather being indexed by the popular search engines. So this searchability like popular keywords you see 
you can use this one popular keywords you can use the optimized vector graphics google analytics and you can publicize your article on social media to different platform interest groups twitter linkedin so whenever you are trying to identify whether the journal is rather very much um accepted or not you can go to the in facebook different types of uh, groups are there in twitter you can ask in linkedin specifically uh, uh, one particular social networking site for serious fellows so you can go there and you can identify your channel now regarding journal quality whenever you were talking about how we can assess that one a journal is having the quality so this quality criteria is rather judged by this one that is although you can see that one some of the quality parameters may not be very much worthy also i am saying you that one from from my perspective i can say that one obviously some of the parameters here stated is not very much worthy to consider as quality the concept of quality but obviously Uh, these are some bit of related with that one is the journal read by your target audience this is very important whether how many people or how many people or how many researchers in your area are reading that particular journal does it have the issn number this thing is not actually that much of so issn number right now has become an ornamentary one everyone is getting issn and even the predatory journals are also having issn so this is but iss and the very 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 uh, scope of providing iss and or very concept of providing iss one is different but right now what is happening that everyone is getting iss and a uh, year i think we have to think ponder over more that is not to assign iss number to each and every one who is applying for the um, new journal and the c target audience is important then is it subscribed to by libraries this is one important thing because libraries whenever they are subscribing journals they are also um, identifying or they are also uh, evaluating different types of factors check and values and as because this is being used by the faculties of that particular or the surroundings of their library specifically the academic libraries so libraries are having some feedbacks so obviously with that feedback the libraries can subscribe different types of channels now ranking that is how does it rank compared to other respected journals in your field so if you actually only some core journals 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so what is the range or what is what is the rank is it led by an effective editorial board this one very important thing there is editorial board because this editorial excellence is one of the most important thing for measuring journal quality whether it is peer reviewed review policy is the publisher clearly mentioned many of the times you will say that on published by one individual from one particular place this is not the thing publisher and we are having this one um, the journal quality the second one is the journal quality and where in this one journal quality will be measuring the citation metrics we are measuring the citation metrics and so um, the serve as a measure as a journal articles uh, authors institu- institutions and research impact based citations can be the journal specific one journal specific metrics include journal impact factor i told you that one in one mile of my son the journal impact factor agent factor five year index immediacy index journal metrics can have problems and look at the all factors of making decisions i already told you that one now speed of publication this is another aspect that is many of the journals are having some kind of stop actually a gap period that is once you submit your article and from sub- the date of submission uh, to the date of publication the time gap is a very important thing many of the articles are having 6 to 9 months uh, because of the pressure they are having almost all the times so this is one thing but here one particular point is very important that is if this speed of publication is or rather this stop gap period is more many times it happens that the relevancy of the article see if it is a case study or rather some kind of study where the time is rather one 
particular factor you will see that one that will actually the focus of that particular research gets lost and it becomes it tends to be on historical research so that is the problem so this for this one the speed of publication is important and another type speed of publication is important because you see specifically for the science applied science or pure science any particular aspect if you do not uh, any particular aspect if you do not actually um, um, publish in real time you will see that one it will simply um, be the wastage of time and within the meantime if another one is just doing a kind of the same thing so might be this duplication of work uh, as because you are not noticing who is actually doing what kind of work so obviously uh, the researcher might get dejected with that very thing um, because of this time factor he or she may lose the opportunity to be the first submitter or first propounder of that idea in that particular field and is your research study time sensitive that is what the important thing and other factors are there that is archiving article and supplementary data whether the archiving is there or not whether you can access the archive there is a, what is the policy of the funding agency the ethical guidelines we are all, all almost all the times we are discussing this one compliance with the public access mandates that is whether uh, this will actually do any kind of social good or not or it will be with the hand of some um, you can say that one um, publication mafia who are actually always controlling this one that is um, access to publication or whether there are the article processing charges or not now next thing is that this is your part that is think check submit initiative what is that so now one thing that is www that is think check submit dot org they are prescribing this thing that is first you think then you check and then you submit what are you submitting your research to a trust journal thing is it the right journal for your work this is a thinking procedure then you check it use our checklist so that is they have developed one checklist and if only if you can answer yes to the questions on our checklist then submit so it is actually guiding researcher to identify establish an authentic journals for their research collectively with authority of education this cross sector initiative promotes integrity and certainty on reliable research study coalition founded in the wake of deceptive publication that is the predated one now think verify that the selected journal is authentic do not fall for predatory journals ensure that your research study matches the aim and scope of this selected journal check whether or not you whether or not you peers know about the journal ask it that is is this journal have you heard about this journal is the publisher is trackable is the journal's peer review system is specified clearly the peer review policy if the article published are indexed that's already published articles are indexed indexed in where in scopus in web of science or rather in case of site share in case of sky mago different types of things so at least where these are rather enlisted journal fee structure that is how much they are charging for publishing an editorial board affiliation of the industries initiative states only if the answer is yes to most of all these questions then only you can go for publishing with that one and right now the last portion that is the digital tools to identify the right journals now what are these now we have the author specific tools that is find my journal this is the thing find my journal so on of its kinds the software assisting the researchers to identify the most suitable journals by application of mathematical and objective algorithm this thing you have to understand this algorithm is rather the back end policy back end not back end technology rather for this one uh, this is a kind of thing that is where it is assisting you to find out your journal based on certain parameters extremely useful for early stage as well as experienced researchers thus these are the different publishers and database 
included in Find My Journal, Elsevier, Taylor Francis, Willy, Springer, Web Science, Scopa, Sage, PubMed. So practically speaking, you will see the world's most renowned publishers, those who are actually publishing different kinds of journals, are you can get that on Find My Journal. So just check it and see whether that journal is rather popping up or not. If the journal is popping up and at the same time you will actually get that one. Other things also, this is where you see for the purpose of, so you, you just this is sim simply answer the following sets of questions. So only those questions you just state and ultimately you get that one. The name of the journal or rather the names of the journals where you can uh, Submit, your journal, submit your article. So this is what your subject area, most cited journals in your manuscript, objectives of your study, article type, expected time of publication, accessibility, SCI indexing, target audience, comparative quality of journals, keywords based on your manuscript. So the, all these things, they can specify you. That is, who, what are the particular journals? What are the list of journals? What are the different types of journals that can help you um, to promote your research activities? Then we have the author-specific author tools. This is the Inago's Open Access Journal Finder. This one is the Open Access Journal Finder. With the application of this advanced search, search algorithm, that is OAJF, this one, Open Access Journal Finder, it is actually finding out the top notch open access journals indexed by the most trusted directory of open source, DOAJ. It helps you. You have to find out the whole thing of DOAJ. You just take the help of this one and it will find out the relevant journals from DOAJ itself. So aims to solve familiar issues related to authenticity of journals. And Inago's proprietary algorithm, so one algorithm is there, so it helps authors narrowing the list of most relevant journals, matching the purpose. And shortlisted journals are rather keyword, keyword targeted, most relevant to the subject area, validated and certified by DYJ, include national, international high impact and peer reviewed publication. Here you see, this is rather author's page. So Inago, if you go there, you will find this one. Open Access Journal Finder powered by Inago. So in the back end, this is being driven by the Inago Developed Special Algorithm. And you can say that on general results. Add your manuscript abstract here. Here you just go for that one and you can search journal. This is the directory of Open Access Journal. So this is where, so these are rather, you now you see different types of uh, Menus are there and the most important one is this one, pricing and quotation. So as because they develop their own algorithm and technological backend, so they are charging for that one. And then we are getting the publisher specific tools. Like you see the Willis Journal Finder, then Springer's Nature Journal Suggestor, Elsevier's Journal Finder. So we have the Springer's Nature Journal Suggestor, Willis Journal Finder. Beta, Elsevier Journal Finder have very user friendly process. The authors have to submit the title of the manuscript, the abstract, followed by selecting the subject area. And then the software will return a list of best match journals suited for manuscript published submission. So these things are very important. This is what that is what is the algorithm? Algorithm, so basic principle is that you just mention the title because many of the times so this title Actually, in research article, titles are rather very lengthy and title is actually having lot of keywords or metadata. So the titles, then you actually submit the manuscript, manuscript, that is the title of the manuscript. So give the abstract. If you write your article properly and your abstract should reflect, it is actually the mirror of the whole article. So this abstract should contain or should be prepared in such a way that it can identify the core essence of your journal or article. So, and then you follow, say, the subject area, that's your interest, and then the algorithm is like that by matching all these data or metadata, it will try to extract the relevancy and relevancy of that one, and if it will actually, after getting the relevancy, it will actually short it down by uh, your input of different things like the title and the abstract parameters, all these things. It will precise the list 
and obviously you will see that on very selected list will come to you and this will be the, um, the most helpful thing for you and you see this publisher specific say journal finders and here find matching journals and here you see this one that is the find journal by title search for journal and then find so this is what the difference of journal finding tools and uh, lastly tools to ensure the authenticity of journals now how you can see their directory of programs so authenticity so for the open access you can go there but for the closed access you know uh, authenticity you can go directly to the journal site if you go to uh, Januili, if you go to Emerald, if you go to Sage Publishing, if you go to um, Science Direct, if you go to Elsevier, you can go to directly to the journal name and whenever you are going to the about the journal, you will get the list of the editorial board, impact factor, everything. But for those journals which are rather in open mode or rather kept in the directory of open access journals, you will see that one. This online directory is actually having 12,000 high quality peer reviewed open access journals across STEM, that is social science and humanities and discipline. Okay. This directory, the directory is good starting point for searches relating to the credibility and trustworthiness of open access journals. It promotes the principles of transparency and best practices in scholarly publication. And you see here, you see if you go to the DOAG site and if you search any journal like there is a one particular journal here is retrieved and here you see the journal of high energy physics the short form JHEP this is online yes, ISB, that is ISSN home page see they are giving you what are the things they are giving you which is a publisher Springer open that is open publication which who are the publisher international school of advanced studies country of publishing Germany Platform host aggregator, Spring Link, data date, date recorded. Now, Library of Congress subject category, publishers keyword, language, full format. Now, here you see this thing, tick, this is the accepted by the policies of DOAJ, and this is what DOAJ seal. So, this is one trusted journal, and this journal is of high input and having. And see article processing charge, no, submission charge, no, waiver of policy charge, no. And here you can see the editorial boards also. If you get all information in a particular place, obviously by this way you can go for publishing your article in such kind of journal. So this is how, this is the beauty of this one. And here also this thing that uh, article level. Previously I told you the journal. Here you actually get that on article level. Example, this article you are searching and you see the journal homepage, ISSN, publisher, LCC, editorial board, who are the authors, you are getting the abstract. So, and here you are getting that of Creative Commons license, metadata license and retrieval date. So, by this way, you can actually see that one, that is how uh, this potency of your article is rather increasing by submitting this one to such kind of repositories. And DOAJ is when submitting, check it, DOAJ, whether the journal is listed, the publisher is a member of DOAJ, the journal adheres to the revised DOAJ acceptance criteria, journal has been awarded the DOAJ seal, the journal has been removed from DOAJ. If it is removed from DOAJ, don't actually take that one into cognizance. And directory, the journals, if journals are removed from DOJ, now see how it's no longer open access, change that policy, it is inactive, seized, not published enough articles in this calendar year, website URL no longer works, evidence of editorial misconduct, publisher fails to submit new application within given time, no adherence to industry's best practice. So by this way, they have this, this one, you see strict policies. And if any particular journal, uh, journal, journal proponent vendor or rather the actually the journal publisher, they are not actually abiding by all such things, this will be removed. And journal seal is provided, 
Deep they use digital object identifiers, DOI. DOI is rather one particular address, like IP address. This is the specific address of each and every article throughout the world. And you see, believe it, uh, just um, every article published in uh, rather the you can say the controlled journals or rather this type of journals or indexed or abstract journals they are having the DOI digital object identifier it provide article metadata deposit content with a long term digital preservation deposit policy registered allow reuse embed machine readable CC learning information allow author to hold copyright without restriction this is a policy of this one then we have Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association or SPA. Well, SPA this, they represent the interest of the open access publishers and globally via exchange of information, setting standards, advocacy, education, innovation. So these are actually the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association. So this is what this association. So within the open access, they actually make their own policies stringent application evaluation process followed by publishers applications are judged by the committee and board of members again strict set of membership criteria they ensure the publisher follows responsible publishing and practices adverse to what's per model and see this one member record so this is the title scholar url owner editorial office copyright link copyright policy and if, if you go there, you can find out their policy also. Then Clarivet, this Thomson Reuters branch, so they also made one analysis, master journal list. If you go there, master journal list, so find a specific journal by this one. View a list of all journals, view a list of journal coverage charges. All journals coverage charges. So this one is rather, you can say that one, a kind of commercial venture. So this clarivet analysis, this is actually the who are the promoters of web of science or who invented the web of science, who are actually selling web of science. So they have this master journalist. You can search that one also, the open commercial journals from this one. And if you find any journal here, you will actually be rest assured that this will be indexed in web of science scopus there also. This is what the beauty of this one and tools to identify the journal ranking we have that one sky mago journal and country rank one stop platform for journal and country ranking it is using google page ranking algorithm and you can obtain such details from sky mago uh, that is the sgl ranking and h indices a free platform from where you can get all information and journals are compared and analyzed according to the subject area they have different types of uh, indicators and here you see this one that is the subject area this is a journal this is a type that's SGR index H index total documents total documents are last three years total references how many references total sites citable documents this last two years reference so you can even calculate the H index or rather impact factor everything from this place so this is what the journal and country ranking thing and lastly we are, we are going for the disclaimers that is all contents used in presentation are under CC licensing that is creative commons license and for academic use only thank you and thank you very much for your